ready to get started? Let's kick this baby off. Let's do it. Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. We have the full strength gang here together. I'm Steve. Lucas. Jay. Connor. All right. We got some, some stuff to talk about. Um, spring practice has begun. Yeah, it's April 6th. We're it is. Plowing a th- well, we're plowing through. Does it, I guess because we're actually getting to see some <laughs> yeah. spring practice, it seems like it's going on forever. It's awesome. It is cool. Uh, it is really, really cool. I, uh, we've talked about it before. This is the first off season in a very long time. Off season, first off season in a very long time that I have been plugged into football. Yeah. I, I, I usually totally do agree. my best. I use my, do my best to unplug from it. I try yeah. not to follow it very much, just to hit the reset the button. The prior regime helped that out a lot. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we're not used to, like you just said, we're not used to seeing some of this stuff. So, um, no, it's it's chugging along. I can't believe we're already in the the first week of april Mm -hmm. the bowl game seems like it was not that long ago Mm -hmm. a lot has changed a lot has changed lots going on lots um a lot of good things going our way we're gonna talk about ou football and and how we feel about the positiveness i think we got a lot of positive energy flowing tonight we just won at singo over at your pablo shout out shout out to the lost ogle the money game thank you lost ogle yep 75 big ones for the crew here we're sitting here celebrating i've got um some some evan williams and a Patron 64, and uh, what are you smoking there? I've got a CAO Black. And a uh, health drink or something? Uh, yep, health drink. Pretty lame, I just have water. I am partaking in the Evan Williams as well. Nice. So it's been it's been a while since we have been drinking done the White Label. For a while. For a while. I mean, we, we bar hopped, we went to O'Connell's, uh-huh. or O'Connor's, Great as, Great uh, yeah, shout out to as Schnellberger O'Connor's. used to yeah, say, it was, O'Connor's. It was, it was, it was a solid. solid, a very solid uh, night, very solid. Yeah, burger. Lucas, thanks for uh, kind of taking the fall tonight, man, Wednesday, we're not used to that. Wednesday uh, burger night at O'Connell's, I would definitely recommend that. Yeah. Um, even if you want to call it O'Connor's, like, like Schnellenberger did. <laughs> and then Neil Pablo was a lot of fun, had the... The chips and queso, or the chips and salsa. That's okay. We got chips and queso. That was good. It's a better deal anyway. Yeah, it was a better deal. <laughs> Almost didn't get charged for any of yeah. it. It's the shift change. Yeah. And we won the money, and then and we're back over here to podcast and talk about. Let's start with spring practice. So, what's everybody's feelings? So, Jay, you feeling pretty, pretty rosy? I do feel rosy. I'm definitely drinking the Kool Aid. I was, uh, I was more pessimistic last season than normal. So I'm getting back on Rightfully the... Rightfully uh, so, apparently. Yeah, I'm getting back on the uh, the Homer train right now. Um, I just I just like the vibe. I like what the players are saying. I mean, it could just be talk, but they're all saying somewhat the same thing. They like the intensity. They, they like being coached hard. Some of them even said they've been waiting to be coached like this. So, I we mean... seem I, very responsive to I it. Can't even think, if it's marketing BS... Man, they're doing a good job. Yeah, of just yeah. someone's right. Ri- someone's ra- writing some good scripts, if that's the case, because yeah. everyone is right on point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. It and, is and phenomenal. I tell you, I mean, the way propaganda goes and, and brainwashing, not that that's what it is, but that all matters. And when you're talking about building continuity towards a team and towards a goal, that really matters. If you get it, there's a reason when soldiers march that they all sing a tune together. That yeah, I mean, it seems like moving in lockstep. The cliche, you know, they've bought in. To you know what Venables and them are selling, <laughs> they're probably already seeing results, right? I mean, they're seeing it in their strength. They're seeing it in what they're able to do. What were you saying, Lucas? That this is the first time in a while we've had full contact. Now, yeah, we're really engaging <clears throat> in spring ball. So they're probably liking that. They're probably feeling like it's football, not feeling like they're running around doing some kind of. Uh, yeah, don't break a nail football. because you're a five star. Right. And we haven't heard of any injuries yet. No. So that's good. No. I mean, you, you expect there'll be something. Right. But there's not, yeah, I mean, there may be not just a bunch of weaklings out there's there. There's just been two or three players here there slightly banged up. So yeah. knock on wood, nothing major so far, just yeah. a couple of ankles. and. That's good. Maybe it's good to help them learn to play through some of that pain too, you know, not think that every injury is a reason that you're not going to play for a few weeks. I mean, or, you need a, or you need a it. Monday off before the Kansas game. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... And that contrasts that a little bit with what we're seeing coming out of the marketing department in in uh, Southern California, oh, man. where it just it, it looks like they're trying too hard. To it looks it. fabricated. It does. It looks it looks looks. Beautiful. Hey, look, the coaches are about to do push-ups. We need to get a camera over here yeah. right now. Yeah, and they're not going to look pretty when they're doing them. <laughs> it's like uh, this. Yeah, they did not look. Very they were good doing on the burpees, right and they were not. Yeah, yeah. half. They were not burpees. doing legit burpees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, those were those looked kind of sad. 
But no, not to get, get caught up in that, but I'm, I'm with you. I'm pretty positive on the team. My expectations are high. We ran the poll. Most people's expectations are higher based on what they're seeing out of spring ball. Um, it just feels like we have leaders on the team, finally. Yeah. Like, if, I mean, I, I know that we've, and there's been multiple places that have touched on this, but, you know, the fact that a lot of these transfers who came in have been leaders in prior programs, mm-hmm. and then you have people, you know, one thing I loved hearing was, Jalen Redmond in an interview the other day saying he's ready to step up for this team. Someone who's kind of notoriously quiet, kind of just fills his role, does his job well, now saying he's ready to step up, be a leader on the team. Um, you know, I think it's it's definitely um, kind of refining a vibe of, of who's the next guy up and who's going to be the guy to take that voice. And it's more like I want to do that as opposed to who's it going to be. Who so, has to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I think some of the uh, – portal transfer guys that we got in at first they weren't necessarily super sexy players Mm -hmm. um they seem like good solid players for their teams but they're gonna fit as it goes along further and further and then you hear that most of them were actually team captains so i think it was very deliberate by venables and staff to not just get guys that can come in and contribute but help transform this locker room and give a team that's um just everything they went through the last year mm-hmm. needed some stabilization from within the players and some accountability from older veterans that have kind of, even though they've done it somewhere else, I think they understand what it means to put can on this jersey too. Experience and can bring that credibility that that they've they've been there, they've seen it elsewhere. I think that's a good point. Um, so, Lucas, from your perspective, where where does the where does the shoe drop? You know. <clears throat> It's kind of, we've, we've heard this, you, you put it well earlier, we've heard this rah-rah, we've heard this, you know, I'm pumped up, like, and I, I, I will, admittedly, I'm pumped up because of some of the content I've seen that's purposely put out by the media department. Um, I've that's what I'm afraid of, is that these players have been coached up to go in front of a camera and say, <clears throat> we're training so much harder, we've got more confidence, um... We, we really like this tough coaching better type of situation. Yeah, do you think it's a placebo effect kind of where it's, you know, we've been kind of coached like this, but there's this, there's think, new people? I don't think they would be told to say that. For me, that's just me. I don't, I don't think there's a, uh, you know, a closed door meeting where they sit down and they, they tell the whole team, hey guys, yeah. hear the in all your points. interviews, <laughs> you know, here's your bullet points, make sure you hit them. Yeah. Even though our practices actually suck and nobody's <laughs> you're, getting you're any better, I want you to hit these. I these think ones. with the people that they have put in front of the cameras, they have gone over some of that stuff with them. Like, it doesn't surprise me to hear Braden Willis say, you know, any more than everything's any way tougher than, than it was before. And he said, you know, previously I had a tougher, um, we had tougher school. workouts in high school than right. we than we did in you know, that with the, was with early the previous. on. I doubt that that was something. I don't that think they even worked out yet. I either agree. with Smitty. So I, it was I the first know. week. I think it was that the he first, said. first week. Yeah. Smitty. I, I I don't know. I, I but he wasn't saying that about Smitty. He was saying that about the previous regime. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you have you have something to measure it yeah. against. I think. But I think that, that was maybe right? coached up to say. Maybe. I don't so. think that brought the whole squad together. But it wouldn't surprise me if the the five or six main people that are going to be talking to the media that they trust. They've said. Hey, we're trying to ramp this up. We want to come across as a tougher team than we have been. We're going to be more mentally strong. We're going to be more disciplined, blah, blah, blah. And then by the coaches telling them individually that, it's made its way to them when they've been asked questions in the media to answer that way. Well, and then to kind of rebuttal, the intensity's been up. Like you, yeah. you look at the people on that staff now and some of the people he's well, brought in. There's some look psychos. At, yeah. look, you look at Brent Venables himself. Yeah. Right? I mean – I'm sure the level of oh man, like this is a different pace. Like the, we're we're running on a different level here. I, that's got to be kind of an a, an apparent thing that you're you're experiencing on a day in day out basis. And you're right. Maybe maybe a lot of the talking points have been like Brent Vittables is sitting in there with his staff and saying this is the this is the messaging and the culture that I want to essentially preach, and I need you guys to et- uh, echo my sentiments. Kind of. Yeah. Message, I bet it's but, not even that directed. Yeah. I think you have to keep in mind. Everybody's got a marketing message. Everybody's got something a they're trying to get statement. across, a mission statement, et yeah. cetera. And this is theirs. And I like it. I think if we can build a con- uh, an attitude of toughness, that's 
pretty damn powerful. What's not what is a, it? The DTS? What is it? The d- something? The standard? De- define the standard. Defend the standard. Defend the standard. And I'm not I'm not poo pooing this whole thing. I'm right. just saying when y'all are asking the question of are we all super pumped about getting ready for football? Don't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I'm just I'm right. like a more wait and see type of person. Well, that's we all have. I'm to not. Think. I'm going to be excited point. when the football season gets here, sure. obviously. But I'm not going into it with preconceived notions because I'm hearing them say we're going to be tougher, we're going to be more well, confident, I expect they will be. we're going to be more disciplined, all this stuff. I expect yeah. they will be. I'm going to hold them to a higher standard. I'm going to hold them. My expectations will be built on that. I, I'll i still have to see it before I completely believe it to a degree, but I'm going to come in with an expectation that they're going to play tough and they're going to be tough. And that's a little different than um, I don't know what the, the – the contrast would be in prior years, you could derogatorily say it was entitlement or conceitedness, and, and I don't think that's fair. It was more of a an attitude that they just had talent, and they were looking at their Big 12 championship rings and all of that, and, and a lot to be proud of, but it does feel like the attitude was, we're Oklahoma, we're just that damn good, and now it's we're going to work for it. We're going to be we're going to be hard nosed, and we're going to go earn it. Yeah, and I kind of like that transition. I think what I like most is you know the previous staff, you had to um, kind of see what Grinch and company were going to do, and you know I was excited for new staff too on that side of the ball the last couple of years just to see what would happen, but once you kind of look back at it, and you have Roy Manning who was a linebackers coach who then was teaching corners and I was going to bring that up and, earlier. Yeah. And then Grinch who was a safeties coach and it was arguably the weirdest slash weakest position on the team for three seasons. Nobody else could get in the game at safety. Everybody else on the team rotated constantly. And no matter how bad our safeties played, mm-hmm. no one ever changed. And then you contrast that with the staff that's been brought in now. They all have legitimate skins on the wall yeah. the previous staff was trying to put skins on the wall well i mean look at look at look at the special teams like just something as simple as that your special teams coach leaves to go be a head coach of south carolina and you just decide i'm not going to fill that gap and we'll just figure it out <laughs> yeah okay and we'll never take and we're, ne- we're never going to run back kickoffs we're, we're never, never going to run, run back, back kickoffs <laughs> and you, you saw some of our punts last year well i'd say the it's way- worse than we're never going to run them back and I will c- criticize, continue to consistently criticize um, running back kickoffs. That I think oh, he yeah. ran. He his yeah, two years ago we were complaining too about many too many back, kickoffs, and I think they did. Yeah, but it does seem like through through the Beamer years, and especially without Beamer, we had no plan on when we were running them back and not. It was almost like the player himself could make that decision with no guidance. We would choose to run them back in a in a game situation where it was not desirable and then other times guys were down there's nothing to lose run the damn kick run the ball out and they and they very safely do the fair catch well billy bowman said it in his interview he said oh we never really got to run things back until we needed it and it's like well when we needed it we never did anything (laughs) productive anyways so we we fair catch it anyway because they didn't have any experience (laughs) doing it in live contact exactly teddy layman said that on his i believe this was radio show it's the same thing he said you can't you can't never return it and then only do it when you need it. And You're not re- ready for it. expect a result. Like, right. How are you going right. to have a good return yeah, you when you never it. do it? I guarantee but right that. now, we really need it. Yeah. I guarantee in those years that we were phenomenally good, at, especially punt returns, we did them in practice. And we ran back a lot. And we knew how to do it. And we knew how to hit And you knew what to look at. And you knew, and you knew who to block. And you knew where to and, be. Yeah. You just had a feel well, for also, it. Well, also, if you never, if you never return them, right? You human nature, you probably just kind of oh, sure. go eighty percent. Oh, I'm just running down the field. I kind of well, got my guy. 80% and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh no, he's he's yeah. actually running it. Well, that's where we know we. What had, do I do now? We had fast players, especially with Mims, but really any of them. Stoops was the only one, and I think that it's just because he was Stoops that he knew how to actually get back there and run with a ball. But these were fast players, and they would just make indecisive moves, slow moves. And CD Lamb did not. CD Lamb did not know how to return a punt. And and that's there's no ex- because you see him in the open field. Exactly. Make guys miss. Yes. That's the same thing when you're returning a punt. And you had no idea. You what even he's have doing. more of advantage because right. they're running past you. I was thinking more of the the other ten guys on your team that are just half-assing it down the field. Oh, we're probably not, not returning this the guy one. To block. All of a sudden, oh, 
I actually have to block somebody because yeah. he did run this one out. And and it'd be interesting to see the ratio of penalties. It seems like we were penalized a lot, and I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying we didn't know what we we're doing. And so when you're waiting and you're 80 percent, and all of a sudden you're you're hitting the guy in the back. Yep. Uh, so I mean, I who's the last know. good punt returner we had? Jalen Saunders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Shep? Consistent. I mean, what about Shep? Shepard. He wasn't as good know. as Saunders. No, he wasn't good as Saunders. No, he wasn't as good as Saunders. Yeah, I mean, it was back in the Soup's era. Yeah, Inglesius was good, but that, I and mean, that's they, been they had flashes of good. Years. They were very yeah. talented. And we had some of the best. Oh, talent I mean, Antonio Perkins back but there. No, I, I'm saying I just in, mean like in, in the, the last in the, five in years. In the Riley era, we had some of the best talent back there with Mims. Yeah. And CD Lamb, and yet no production. Yep. And, and then also on kickoffs, the same thing. So I'm excited about that. That that'll, even if that is an average of between good decisions and and then hard nose actually getting up the field and running which 90 percent of kick returns are just run forward and get look yards. At all the great ones yeah. they just run past yeah. everybody they don't do a bunch of dancing no and so if we can just incrementally get an extra average of but five yards gotta, per return you've got to give them a phenomenal scene, i mean well no for sure but you, you there's so much of the dancing that they do. There's so much of the picking. No, 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 pick. Run. Yeah. Run. Just run. Pick left, right. I don't care. Flip a coin. Run. As long as you get past the 25, we're not going to bitch. Absolutely. And <laughs> if you can get an extra, if we can improve our our return yards to, to the tune of just five yards on average, that's a big difference in the, the matter it's of a game. It's a massive difference. That adds up a lot. So I'm excited about that. I think these attentions to detail that they're bringing – um, that that's a reason to be pretty optimistic for sure. Just being mechanically sound is going to be a step up, right? I mean, that's we've seen so like like you just it's a good said, way to the, put it. Mechanically sound. Being so undisciplined, not only just with penalties, but just in like we've seen such bad. And I mean, I'm a I'm a recreational football fan who loves watching football, and I can still tell that what we do a lot of the time is not what you're supposed to be doing as a football player, right? Like tackling and just we've talked about that for years just looking yep. like pinball machines out there well not playing complimentary football yeah. not so not really executing in a way where the offensive line seems to be in sync with what the rest of the offense is trying to accomplish yep. so that'll be an interesting point to look that was a point of criticism that we had coming into the season and during the season with Bow and the what was the offensive line was doing i think we've turned and come around to thinking that now we're pretty optimistic about Bow and think that that wasn't his problem. We'll see. We'll see how that works. Early reports are promising on the offensive line. Now, again, you got to see it. you got to see who they put out there. A lot right. of work. But um, it all starts there. I, it's I don't just think so telling where that, where that staff was at with how that offensive line performed last year. I mean, it's just yeah. so indicative of... Is anybody the, worried about left-handed quarterback? No. Since we, as far as the offensive line goes, because normally your best offensive lineman is your left, left tackle. tackle. Yeah. So those guys are groomed yeah. to be left tackles. Who do we have it right? Now we've got a brand new right tackle starting. Well, it, it's right. either going to be, um, it's probably between Wanya Morris and. Which played guard last year, right? But who, well, he was a tackle like, at Tennessee. But who right. from couldn't get on the field seen for some to, reason. He's yeah. supposed to be good. Um Savion Bird yeah. is challenging Anton Harris Anton at Harris. left tackle. So there's a thought the loser of that one might Slice be your right tackle. Over. Yeah. Um, also. Yeah, but the, do you want your lesser of two talents to be your right tackle on the blind side of a left-handed quarterback? Exactly. Well, you, want, you want the loser to stay at, at but, left, Yeah, right? exactly. But it's, not, but it's not just that simple. Like no, Certain not. players – Step better yeah, with I legs, and so right. They're going to be left footed, right footed. So that's all yeah. going to matter too. I'd be more worried if it was something that was sudden. If our backup quarterback was left handed, and our we're in game two, and our starter goes down for the season, and now we're stuck. They've got they. This is not a surprise to anyone that he's left handed. So I think I would hope that they're yeah. preparing <laughs> for that some and, preparation and, there. And, and, and and strategizing <laughs> yeah. around it. Yeah. Um, it's a concern from the standpoint of. Um, We've had great offensive Where lines. we're going to position people. Now, now, Gabriel will be a junior. No, he's done. They say on the radio he no, has three, three years, years left. Yeah. Three years. Three. So, because I would he say. Had, he had a COVID wow. year, which everybody has. Right. He had a year where he started. but And got injured. And and played a whole season. So, Nick uh -huh. Evers is going to And then he had a season where he only played <laughs> four. He played less than four games so they could redshirt him. So, he literally has three full years left. Well, so I would I would say that. He'll take the only way he yeah. plays three years, 
I don't know how he'd play three years, right? I, I mean, I don't. He's I'm either, not saying he will. No, I'm no, just no. He's no. eligible to play. So three he's more either years. good enough to play three years, and he's going to go pro, or he's going to get injured, or there's going to be something funky that happens. So he probably won't be here three years. Um, I guess the worry would be to to try to create a worry and a pessimism would be he does put in two solid full years, and maybe in a weird injury situation, he comes back for a third year, and um, you, whoever you're. Uh, between Nick Evers or whoever can't become the quarterback. You know what? And you've got transfer. three. And you, or he gets injured, and that's why Gabriel's back. Whatever. And and what I'm getting at is you have three years where you do have a, a, a an offensive line problem of who you're recruiting. And if they really want to, you know, some coach could say, do you really want to go to Oklahoma and be on the right side when you're a left side guard and – you're there only because you're protecting the blind side of a guy that you're probably not going to be protecting in the NFL. There's a worry there, recruiting wise. I mean, Lane Johnson made a shit ton of money being a right tackle. Yeah, like, I, I, I he's don't the highest, think it's he's the highest paid right yeah, tackle. Yeah, I don't think league. it's a big worry. Trent I'm Williams is the highest worried. paid left tackle. In well, the league. I'm not worried about Gabriel not being good enough to leave the NFL either and having a third year for us that way. You can be a really good. No, I'm not worried about that at all. And not be one that moves on to the league. Right, no, no. I'm not worried so, about that at yeah. all. I'm saying that Jason if he stays White, the whole time Heupel, and it messes up examples. our offensive line rhythm in terms of who we're recruiting and where we're playing players. And I don't think – I'm not yeah, worried I'm not, about that. I'm not concerned about him staying too long offensive line-wise. I'm not either. So I'm not – But it I'm, is crazy. It's the only thing I can think of that would be something to that be worried That is wild. About. I don't know that he that has the wild. arm strength. From, from the video I've seen, I haven't gone back and watched his UCF stuff, but watching OU practice videos and stuff – he looks like he's got an okay arm, but he, he doesn't have. I don't know I don't, what you're seeing. To I don't say think that. he has an amazing arm. I've seen fluttering balls. I don't think he has an. I don't think anyone said he has an amazing yeah, arm. Yeah, I think. I mean, our best chance is if he's like Hypo, arm. where he knows where the ball needs he to just, go. He just needs to be efficient. He, he, he just, just needs throws to be a bunch of 10, 20, 20 yard passes. Maybe I'm yeah. wrong. I don't remember Baker Mayfield early on being touted as having an amazing arm either. Now he ended up having an amazing arm. You think of the, the sideline throws and the things he makes, and obviously yeah, the deep he had balls. A good arm. And he did have a he had a very good arm, but I don't remember that being touted. I don't. I, I do remember with Kyler that being touted, but not exactly until he really was playing. Um, I'm not too worried about that. And so, well, he, no, his high school stuff. He had amazing. Yeah, he had, he he had, had a great arm in high school. Arm. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm just not that worried about that. It's like I, I I'm not saying I'm worried. I'm just saying I think people's expectations. Well, maybe, maybe be tempered a little bit because he had the one really good season at UCF. <laughs> How many great quarterbacks, though? It's because it's an attribute of them, but they all have to have a good enough arm, right? They don't have well, to have a like, great arm. You're, you're but my not thought is the pro situation, anyways, if, if you don't have a good enough, have a good arm. enough arm, right? I think he's better so than Josh think, Heupel did. I, I don't think, think we worry about it. I think he's better than Uyagalale or whatever his name is from Clemson. I mean, I think we're going to be. In. I will take accuracy and brains over big arm every I, day. Of the week. I agree, but what I'm talking about is the possibility of him playing two years and going pro. Right. I don't know that he has the arm. To, to play two years and go pro, I think he play two years and get beat out for the job. Maybe. Yeah, I don't think I don't think f- uh, from a, a Division One football standpoint nowadays, you can let someone with the way that recruiting goes stay that long and be like, hey, like this. And he probably would look unless for his opportunity unless he's won you straight two national championships. But we're, not, and three years. but we're not in that cycle. See, we got to get out of this. We got to get out of this mindset right. of a five star every other cycle. You're right. You're right. We yeah. don't want to upset this kid. And when is it going to be his turn? And it's so hard to get out of that guy. cycle, dude. And <laughs> also a temperate where everybody wants great quarterback play, but I don't think the team is going to be built around right. elite quarterback play. Well, Brent There's going to be a better yeah. team surrounding the quarterback. And Brent, almost no co- team ever is. Yeah, We had two exceptions to yeah. that. Big exceptions. To that. And but that think, spoiled the hell out of us. But and, I think Riley used that with like Caleb Oh, Williams. absolutely he did. And when you look back to the videos we saw thinking about spring ball and stuff, with Spencer Rattler throwing the ball behind his back and all that, he, no doubt about it, he had a rocket arm. And that's yeah. kind of all he had. Yeah. I mean, I think the kid's very talented. I think he's going to have a good year at South Carolina. I think it's probably going to be better than Caleb Williams' year this year. But he'd be really good in the XFL. He's not. The league it, difference. It, the statistics will be interesting because it's a different that will league. be very yeah. yeah. That you're right. You're right. But even if we if we could adjust for that, I think we would see that that Spencer Rattler is going to have a very good year. But he's not probably an elite quarterback because he probably doesn't have an elite mind. And he doesn't have an elite mindset. He went to South to Carolina. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, like, 
you kind of look at some of this stuff, and I get there's a relationship there and whatever, but, I mean, it's not like he went to a cont- – like, South Carolina is not going to contend in the no. SEC East. I, think, no. I mean, I think he – if he didn't have the relationship with Beamer, I think he would have gone to a, a bigger school. I don't – he could have gone I mean, I'm to – I'm thinking like a Wisconsin. He could have gone like to an a, Auburn or – I mean, hell, Florida doesn't have a quarterback right now, do they? I still think he would have killed I mean, Wisconsin or Iowa. Yeah. But, I mean, no, but that's my point. No, but is Spencer Rattler the guy who says, oh, I'm going to take a relationship over somewhere where I actually think I'm going to be able to, like, actually make a mark for myself? Unless he was humble. Yeah. I think so. He might have made the most – intelligent decision I, right. or, or I, he that, may have made the more intelligent decision maybe. than Caleb Williams did where where he said I'm going to find the right fit that can be just good enough and get the right exposure that I can get to the NFL and Caleb Williams may be caught up in making the wrong decision where Wisconsin or some of these other places or staying at Oklahoma was the better fit for him and in the end that we may be able to see the difference in just what they can actually do in terms of getting to the NFL. I mean, who's to say South Carolina doesn't go eight and four this season? I mean, I haven't looked at their schedule, but they, who's to say the SEC they East? Be, they they played they well last year. And he would be uh, that would be a great season. Yeah, if he goes eight and four and just oh, puts yeah. up good numbers, no doubt about season. it. He's he's probably a yeah. late first round pick. Yeah, you know, he's probably the fourth or fifth quarterback off the board, possibly, mm-hmm. and that's all he's really looking for. Yeah, uh, that's what a big a payday. Change of events. That that's would be a big, another big concern payday. I have. Well, not isn't a major concern, but what if Gabriel looks? Well, we have a great season this year. He comes back again. We have another good season, and then Levy's gone because there's probably a he gets chance. a head. He play yeah. he, he if we have two really good seasons in a row, Levy takes a head coaching job somewhere. But at that point, then we bring in a brand new offensive coordinator and a brand new. At that, at that point, times? at that point, being an offensive coordinator, at OU becomes a commodity. Yeah, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Because, you know, we we know, a, no, it becomes. Well, I know what you're saying. Or a high demand, yeah, yeah, but, it's it's but it does become high, something yeah. that you just, just plug desired. somebody else right. in. It's like Alabama. I mean, shit, they turn over their offensive coordinators and every coordinator. Yeah, they hire former ex coaches to be offensive coordinators. Well, they, yeah, they they just, analysts like well, but I mean, you look at the people they've turned through. Bill O'Brien. Like you wouldn't call them. You know, they're not winning because of elite coordinators. If we get back to the days of. You know, Mangino to Chuck Long to um, Kevin Wilson. You know that was a, a fantastic stretch. I'll take I'd, that. I take. But a, I think you. I take that, a right? decade with three offensive coordinators like that with no problem. Absolutely. Because then you build out your coaching tree. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. It looks that's, good. That's that's what a very that successful program looks of, like. You don't want. You really don't want coaches that will stick per around. Se that are five, six, seven years, right? Unless it's a lifer like a Gundy who's right. You know, right. Loves the I mean, program. You think, and you think Clemson was bitching that Vin- Brent Venables was there for twelve seasons or however long he was there? Hell no, they were no. loving it. Yeah, they were loving it. And 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 that's de- very much the exception to the rule yeah. because most of the time you're looking at a guy like that and going. Why the heck do we have this guy still for 12 years? How does yeah. he not get a head coach? They job? also paid yeah. him higher than any other yeah, defensive true, coordinator by ever. Almost every other so, head coach. So, I mean, coach. most head coaching jobs that he was going to get were going to be That's close another thing lateral. all you will be able to do is pay at a, a very high premium. Right. So they will be able to keep people longer than other places will. Just you got to compare them to those other elite programs, not to – Look at the rest of the Big Twelve aside from Texas. Like they're not going to hang on to a great coordinator more than a year, and they don't. We should be able to hang on to guys longer than that. When's the last time they had a great coordinator? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it depends on what you're looking at. If you look at at, at Knowles at, at Oklahoma State in defense, you know he's one done moving. Up. They've had they've gone through several pretty successful offensive coordinators as well. No, not a lot. I mean, who Oklahoma they just State turned through? Oh, the no, rest Texas. of the Big Twelve. Oh, so, Texas. Yeah. I said, when's the last time Texas had a good quarter? Todd Orlando was uh, uh, no, supposed I'm putting to be good. Them, I said, put Manny them aside Diaz. because they got the I mean, budget. Just, <laughs> no, they, they, they are in OU's caliber of budget. Mush they camp. could afford a guy. They yeah. haven't had a good guy. That's a different issue yeah. altogether. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. It's no, that's just, that's just some weird Texas I don't think people, I don't think people want to work there. How weird would it be to be a Texas fan? If you really, in your heart of hearts, honestly looked at it, like if every Texas fan's a Lucas. I'd but they can't. S- I don't think there are any Texas fans like Lucas. There must yeah. not be, right? They've all committed suicide. There's got to be, because there's not a lot of OU fans like Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't very many realists in this world, that's for sure. Well, I would say there's not a lot of people like us. I, I, I'm going to put all of us in that category. That There definitely are those fans at Texas that are like that, and they've just got to be pretty damn frustrated because they have underachieved to such a high degree. They have so much more going for them than almost any other program. In the country. They have so much more. Than, like, they have to look at, at us with such 
frustration <laughs> here's, and here's envy. Here's the deal with the Texas fans. They they completely reset every year, and this is their year. Yep. And this is true. If we were coming off, they're delusional. If we were coming off a five a and cow. seven season, they're pagans. If we went five and seven last year and lost to Kansas. And kept our head coach. This podcast would be the most <laughs> negative. Nant- we would not be talking about. The I wouldn't great be doing this podcast Here's if we went we five and seven. Let's Twin go back. Let's Texas, go. Texas lost to Kansas last year too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing a podcast if five we were if we were five and seven. Here's what we're going to do, guys. Kansas. And they're we're, back. Here's they're our back. new. Here's our new off season. We're going to watch. The John Blake years, and we're gonna podcast <laughs> as if no, it's actually happening. I don't know. I want to. <laughs> no. I was so, of conscious too enough. I wasn't conscious. Even enough the to Gibbs do that, years. So. I mean, <laughs> Texas is it. really close to the Gibbs years, is what you describe it, and those were so god awful frustrating. At least we had probation over our. I mean, we were still going heads. to Gator Bowls and stuff. And oh, Texas can't even. We're make celebrating game. Gator Bowls. You know, <laughs> we have victories there and everything. My own personal hope is um, to see a turnaround to the likes of what Dave Aranda (coughs) has going at Baylor. Even though Baylor's not elite, his teams are tough, they're physical, they're fast, they know where they're supposed to be. That's all I want. I mean, maybe it's asking a lot. I don't don't know. but I don't think that's asking a lot at all. I think we'll achieve that and more because we're going to, hat for hat, be a significant level of more talented and I include the coaching staff in that as well. Talk about a school that knows how to make a couple of good hires. Good lord. Yeah. I mean, you go. Yeah, from hats Matt, off to those Matt guys. Rule to David. I mean, yeah, you had a couple down. Those years, rich oil Baptists, they know what they're good doing down lord, there. Man. Throwing, you got to give it up to those two guys for going in there money. after all of what happened. Yeah. With the Bryle stuff, and right? Be willing to take on the challenge of trying to bring back Baylor. Absolutely. I mean, that's that takes some fortitude. Just to do you think in it. the evil, evil layer that is the NCAA, they look at it and it's a big failure that they didn't crush Baylor more than they surely would. I wish they would give them the SMU death penalty, but they didn't. And, and I look at that and I think a lot about this basketball season and how they they crushed Oklahoma State and then didn't touch Kansas. and then touch Kansas, who yep. wins the national title and. They, and, and they're fine with that, you know, in their evil lair. That that's and Oklahoma that's State cooperated doing what the they entire wanted. time. Yeah, they that's, what, one, that's doing what they had wanted. One coach, go but rogue. Baylor's not. Baylor is analogously o- Oklahoma State of basketball, and and they should get crushed in the logic of in the history yeah. of the NCAA. And they didn't do it. Like ah, we missed one. We should have gotten them. So I yeah, that's that's a pretty amazing story. What Baylor's been able to, but you know, all all that said, and you know. Big 12 championship and everything, they were doing it in the midst of um, a season that was a down year for OU, and several years it's a down year for the conference. So the conference yeah. has downtrended quite a bit. It's kind of like when Bill Snyder did so well at, Oklahoma, at Kansas State. His biggest competition in Oklahoma and Oklahoma State were down because of probation. And so he built something tremendous, tremendous accomplishments, but he did it all in a in a realm of opportunity that you don't usually get. I'm yeah. more so just in talking about just the way they play. Like, oh yeah, they don't have as much talent. That's like why said, we thought of you as a, a good down year, but candidate I mean, for they coach. play with intensity. They know where they're going. But and that's how I have to rationalize it in my head. Is like, man, yes, I want that shift in how we play, but man, if we just get the sh- like you just mentioned, if we get the shift that Baylor got. Plus the talent that we have, yeah, yeah. oh my god! Like, yeah. I mean, I've tried to been rationalizing like, wh- how do we differ from this team, or like, what's different about? It? How are we just not going to be a, a mediocre middle? I was like, man, we some of the dudes we're bringing in and just keeping around that we haven't seen utilize their talents is remarkable. I, so. I, I'm a little optimistic that this team, this coaching staff, is going to do a better job with talent like that is going to do a better job of finding those second string guys and giving them the right opportunities and not just some blind let's rotate everybody in and see what clicks type of and a thing and put them at five like different actually positions actually yeah and not put them in a zillion positions i loved it when venables came out and said with billy bowman sometimes you got to teach him just a little bit you show him too much and you you do a disservice to the kid and and he never is able to really click mm-hmm. and that that's so true um, he said, be an expert at the position yeah. that you're playing. I was like, Man, The previous yes. staff did not seem to evaluate their current roster and put players where they should play. Well, it's like playing – it's like – and you saw that so much on defense, which just, again, is so much of like, man, what, what 
Alex Grinch like did not know how to handle a program of this capacity with the talent that we had. I don't think as a as the primary decision right. maker. I think you're like, right. Like it's like and it's probably why he got yeah shown the door at, at Ohio State. Exactly. It's like go, yeah, please go and be DC at OU. So it's like putting Drake Stoops at running back on offense. <laughs> like it's comp- it's he was doing that type of stuff in a defensive in a defensive way. And it's like what are we doing here? Yeah. And we were so I, I personally was so caught up on. Score the ball, score the ball, score the ball. Where it's like last year when we see, holy cow, man! Like, for as far as we say we've come defensively, the stuff that we're doing logically makes zero sense. Well, it kind of maxed out. It maxed out with you had a, a few more talented people that you recruited. That that is true, and you got them lo- in in a few situations where they could do well, and you did see some moderate improvement in the defensive numbers. This the statistics definitely bear that out, but it but it definitely plateaued. Yeah, and we couldn't get over that hump, and then it it was one of those unsustainable situations that just fell off a cliff as things started to unravel. And part of unraveling is kids and their parents, for better or for worse, are going to get frustrated mm-hmm. when they're not, re- and, and they're going to know like I, I'm not in the right position. That guy is not in the right position. Yeah. You're and he's making playing me look in front bad. Of me. Yeah. Um, why am I rotated out? Why am I not in on this play? This is a key play. They just scored a touchdown. Why am I'm looking left and right? And, and I got three all stars here between myself and the guy in the left and right of me. And, and we're not the in on the, and we're on the sidelines. What's yeah. going on? I mean, just as a novice person watching games, to watch your best defensive line come off the field for fourth and two, collectively I mean, too. I mean, what is that? Not one guy collectively. Like, how did no off the one field? on the whole staff? Or even Lincoln himself. How do you not have an like, understanding of that? Doing? I don't think Lincoln has a spot in that matter. I think Lincoln That's said. I think he was too busy looking at his play chart. Exactly. I think Lincoln yeah. said, Grinch, you do you on defense. You guys yeah. give up a touchdown. I'm going to go out there and try to score the ball. Do you think he thought that it didn't matter? Did he get caught up in kind of um, getting high on his own supply that he thought he could just score at will? And it didn't matter that much. And then when he was that his he, philosophy? When he, when he couldn't, he got caught up in not being a head coach and trying to make his offense Maybe work so. during the game. Maybe so. Like yeah, he, like, I could see that. I mean, if you look back at the Lincoln Riley track record, all the way back to East Carolina, a lot of success on offense, obviously, but never putting together a full program. And and I look at Brent Venables, and it just to me, it is head and shoulders different in a guy that understands how to have championship level football top to bottom and what it means and how it what it takes to get to that level delegate and i don't think riley understood all of that ever yeah. he never has been a part of it um, yeah that's the thing the whole previous staff had zero well gundy had one we had one national championship right and then this new staff has like eight right and this new staff knows what it takes to win a national championship yep i mean do, it, do you just, think you brent's gonna be a guy that when like the defense need, he can tell the defense needs a rest. That he looks over at Lebby and he's just like run the ball. We're not. Oh, absolutely, complimentary yeah. football. Yeah, I think Stoops absolutely. would do that. Yeah, there were times when Stoops would go over to the offensive coordinator and say, "Hey, right, we need you to. We don't need a a one and a half minute drive that we're going to punt or right. You yeah, know. yeah, touchdown or punt, right. which is fine. Touchdown's fine. Right, but punt is killer. Yeah. We need kill we us. need a sustained. Yeah. you know, he's going to have to ten too. play drive. He's going to have to with Levy's with Levy's pace that he's going to bring to the table as well. Yeah, like, I'm a, I'm his, a little concerned with with that. So I mean, because it's going to have to I happen. Think, I think he'll be fine. There's going to have that. to be a check and balance there for yeah. sure. The complimentary football was so lacking in the last few years that <laughs> I I think that it has to be an improvement. <laughs> it also, it's <laughs> so crazy. It's going to depend on you know. How well is the defense playing? Uh-huh. I mean, maybe you can go a three and out. It doesn't matter. You're fine. Right. Yeah, you right. want to get back out on the field. And, and that's know. an advantage because you can figure out then at that point you can you can take more chances because you can trust your defense. And you know you, 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 you go three and out, that's okay. Sometimes it felt like we were trying to go three and out it, under Riley when we had no business doing it because putting that defense on the field was just so vulnerable. God, we, we could get into it like for so long. I mean, it's just – we can go back, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, just obviously because there's so much other to talk about. But just go back and look at some of like the head coaching decisions. Head, there's the decisions. It's just like, man, it's just you could tell like it's this is his first gig. I, and I mean, I think he's gonna learn. Like, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna do well at USC. I really do. He, you can't not do well with some of the talent that you're bringing in there, and what you're maximizing. And in the league you're in. Yeah, and especially in the league you're in. 
but it it is a a stark stark difference. But less like on on spring to kind of bring it full circle. So what? So in your opinion, if you guys had it from what you've seen, who is your favorite hire on staff that's not Brent Venables that you think is gonna? It's kind still of Brent change Venables. Us? It's still that's so it's always BB. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Bates is pretty exciting. Um, I like I like the Chavis hire, man. Yeah, Chavis's yeah. energy is. I really like. Pretty I, I like him. I also think, not that it's he it couldn't be an upgrade, but I think our best coach on that side of the ball was Kane last year. Yeah. So I think our defensive ends have been coached up well. So if he just continues mm-hmm. that, it's good. I think the upgrade. Of all positions is going to be uh, Valai teaching Jay the Valai. secondary. Yeah. yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. I, I, a cornerback teaching cornerbacks. Yes. You mean? <laughs> what did he do? He was one year at Bama, right? And he was at Texas before that. Texas no, he's <laughs> been at. I think he was like the Minnesota Vikings too, and some. I just mean in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think he was only at Bama for a year. Yeah. Um, I think he and was he, not at Texas very long. I mean, he didn't he do got sh- on the year. He didn't do shit at Texas. He got on. Their defense he got, has been sh- He been got terrible. on the final year, I think, with Herman. Is okay. what I think it was. Gotcha. Now, was he the, was he an analyst or was he the corner coach? I think though? he was Pretty the sure corner coach. Because they've yeah. been bad at defense for many years. But they've had dudes. Like, they've had guys. That's, what I'm, there. that's what I'm saying. That's that's a little concerning for yeah. if he was the cornerback's coach when they had dudes and – they were still getting destroyed. All I know is yeah. that well, Saban, was their corner getting destroyed, or was their scheme defense know, right. getting yeah, I mean, destroyed? I, I think Texas sucks. So yeah. who knows? But for, for <laughs> me, this is I'm just I'm just saying that as that's a, good. That's good. It's it, something to pay attention to. Absolutely. Here's the deal. For me, it's an upgrade. The video today. If you're Nick Saban, and you bring someone on your staff, they're not a crappy coach. I, I just it makes no sense. He's he can get I mean, anybody. He hired he Mike wants. Stoops. That's an analyst. Any, no, anyway, the video today. No, yeah. Anyway, they, yeah, exactly. they threw the they threw the the inside corner of the the, of the end zone to Braden Willis. Right. Back shoulder. The yeah. corner is completely turned around. Look, well, I, I, mean, I had a co- route running. I had a conversation. Uh, I had a conversation uh, with someone today. Great I, route running about a tight end. I think it's great when they. I think it's great when they post. Like it's fun watching videos. I I hate scrimmage videos because I always and it, I. It, I it, so it's funny. Eddie Rodas. It's, Redow- it's always Eddie Rodas was yeah. crapped on this <laughs> and, and on Twitter and, and you know whatever. But like. It does make one side of the ball look bad, yeah. and like as as good as I mean, as good as Brady the opposite looked, turning around like, from same, where the ball is delivered. But it's the same token as if he had intercepted that ball, you would just be harping on Dylan. Exactly. No, for sure. Exactly. Like, what kind of throw? No, is it? It's a lose right. lose. Yeah, you don't know lose-lose. because it could have been a contested catch. You know, the corner could have it's really not hard. been sure not been completely turned it's around. It's almost impossible to get a highlight reel where all. Three plus guys in the uh, involved in the play. Yeah, it was a great look throw, great. a really good route. I'm a, but it's a contested. Catch. I'd rather see. Down. I'd rather see a perfect yeah. throw against the air than some. And that's a good point because you know burned. that's going to be the highlight. Yeah. The highlight's never going to be the guy. It, it might be an interception if it was really great, but it's not going to be a guy batting a ball down or a it's contested. N- or a contested. Pitch. They're right. going to show the touchdown highlight because people love points and people like like offense Success and like and yay that. yay points. And in the, the details of, of defense and the subtleties, those are lost on most. I don't fans. know. The previous video they put out was Jalil Farouk One reaching out for a ball, tapping it back to himself right. with good coverage. <laughs> right. So right. when I saw that yeah. play, I was like, "Oh, that was a great pass and a and a, a nice catch still, by tipping it back it was to still himself." Still good defense, and it was still covered. But yeah. when I saw the video of, of the Brayton Willis catch, I'm like, "That corner's facing the opposite the direction because he doesn't." He doesn't know where the ball is. It was our best corner. He literally, (laughs) he literally got juked. (laughs) But it was like yes, but it's still spring. But it's still spring. We'll we'll see what happens. But he got beat on like a play against the tight end. Go look at the NFL every week. Yeah, against the tight end. Amazing, amazing talent gets beat and gets touchdowns. To to, to win football games, you got you're going to beat someone who's good as well. I'm just saying, but no, I agree. Something to keep an eye on. Yeah, it's I for sure. I love. I think it's. There's no way we yeah. lose a game. I think we're all agreed on that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna win. Every, nope, we're not all agreed. We're going on that. 14 and 0 this year. The other thing is 15 and 0. Sorry, it is with a new yeah. staff. No, it's so decisive. That yeah, we don't. They're not gonna play the final the national championship. The other thing is, is with a new staff, you're generally looking for a rebuild of a program because the previous guy was fired most of the time. But not this guy. Unless they go to the NFL. You, you don't not, see a not lot in of, this case. Not in this case. You've got a team that went eleven and two last season. Yeah, it's a rare. It's very rare. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like we we did need a complete culture change, but on the field we we need good tweaks. I thought about that the other day. How big of a pussy is Lincoln Riley though? 
I'm serious. <laughs> you left an 11 and 2 football team. I don't want to keep talking about the guy. I'm sorry, but like, you <laughs> left an still, 11 and 2 one of the football most team. Amazing stories it is. I don't want to keep talking about sports. Unbelievable. We just need to forget him. No. You gotta, no, you can't forget but him. I'm he's saying, a part of the. He's we a need, part of what we're going to do. The, in the Harvard future. Business School needs to do a study, a case study on this because it is a phenomenal the, situation. I think the defense needed an overhaul, in the, especially in the coaching department. If the program, the only and, and Lincoln could never have sniffed this defensive staff. I'll, no, the only I would have liked. Obviously, if we didn't bring in Bates, I would have liked to keep the defensive line. Totally. Now, well, that's what I was about think? to say. Think how much we lost with Kane, and then we got Bates. Yeah. And it, it completely no, but, washed. But Kane it. is Chavis, so we lost yeah. Thibodeau. I just mean Bates. Bates. But Thibodeau's yeah, the one. Thibodeau, that, I'm just thinking in terms of just you recruiting. Take he would have been Thibodeau every day. Yeah, I would. But, and doing but Thibodeau would be want, the only defensive staff member I would like to still see be <laughs> right. on the team, personally. But the yeah. Bates is an upgrade just in recruiting right, alone. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, so, to pick it up on your point, Jay, about Riley couldn't have sniffed a, a defensive staff like that, there's two questions there that are interesting. One is why, yeah. and two, don't we agree that this would be the contention I would make, our offensive staff that Brent Venables not only sniffed but got is proportionally a lot better than any defensive staff that Riley could have gotten. Proportionally, And yes. so is that does that just speak to the culture and how talented as a head coach that Brent Venables is? Is that what all is going into that? Back to my contention that this is a complete championship level uh, team. I think it's just pure respect for the head guy. I mean, these these I don't think Venables had to talk Mm-mm. anybody in to coming to coach. I agree. Yeah, I don't think and so. And this was the weakest year he'll ever face if if things continue to do well. I'm pretty sure Bates took a several hundred thousand dollars pay cut, like like five or six hundred thousand dollar pay cut to come coach with Venables. Because he sees the future. I would pay Brent Venables to let me work for him. I would that like mm-hmm. he's a drug in and of himself. I would. I these guys would. these guys know I, I don't I think Lincoln couldn't get a defensive staff because not that Oklahoma is a stepping stone, obviously, but when you're a positional coach, you do have stepping stones you might want to reach. And I don't think he could have got anybody to come here that was like, you know what, yeah, I'll take over linebacker for a couple of years and then I'll move up and I'll be the, mm-hmm. the defensive coordinator and then I'll get my own head coaching job. I think all the people that Brent has, has brought in, besides maybe Ted Roof, um, feel like they have an opportunity to advance their careers by being with Brent Venable. I don't think Lincoln Riley had the mental capacity to I, be able I agree with that. to expand his support staff. I don't know if he had the self-confidence to or do it. Or the self-confidence. I think he had either self-confidence or self-awareness or the two Didn't combined. know how to run a staff. He didn't, he, didn't know, he didn't know what he needed or didn't know how to go get what he needed. And Almost like to the to the extent that maybe it was a threat to him if he had a really good defense. Mm-hmm. Either I don't – the attitude is I don't need a defense that good or I don't know how to get a defense that good. Um, but you look back at the history of Oklahoma, not that it matters that much, but it's a heck of a program, and it's been a heck of a program on both sides of the ball. We've got as almost as many, if not as many, defensive – players of notoriety as we do offensive players of notoriety especially if you don't count the last 10 years right i wonder if it's unique to having the head coach as the offensive coordinator it could be it absolutely could be because we went from where the majority of teams have their their head coach and he's got a great support staff Mm mm-hmm but when Lincoln was was both, we became, oh, this is just Lincoln's team, mm-hmm. and he he runs this entire offense, and it's his team, and he he brought in who he could. But when you put someone like a Venables in, and he puts an entire staff over here, an entire well, staff well, over that's here, what Stoops did. right? Exactly, and all it, the great ones, all the great that's ones, what all, Switzer did. and a defense, a defensive guy, a great coach knows, and a defensive guy knows he needs an offense. I don't know if an offensive guy knows he needs a defense, and. Well, after the Georgia game, he should have realized. One of the things that you maybe would have to say about Switzer, how great Switzer was, who was the offensive coordinator, is he knew and he built tremendous defenses. Mm-hmm. And that may be the exception. Yeah. Now, was Osborne an offensive coach under Delaney? 
he may have been the offensive coordinator. And so he, you, you, you'd say the same about him. But as you look back at different great coaches in the past, it'd, it'd be interesting to see how many came from the defensive side who knew who, who succeeded because they knew they needed a great offensive side of the ball, and they went out and got it. Whereas guys that were really good at offense kind of sputtered. And it's easy to cherry pick and look at like Mike Leach and say, of course, he never was at a big time program, but it's as if he thought he could just offense his way out of needing a defense. Well, it's so it's the sustainability factor is so low when it's just completely and it's it's so cliche. But I mean, God, we can speak to it very loudly here. Is defense wins championships right. like, and that's something that we have not had in the past. I mean, everything what? has to go your way. Almost a decade. decade. Offensively. Almost a decade. If you don't have a, a really good defense, not even a great, just a really good defense, everything has to go exactly your way on offense to right. win. You look games. at 2017 right. and 2018 yeah. with two of the most prolific offenses in college. The two of the top oh. five prolific offenses ever. In all of history. Ever. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you, you don't even make it to a national championship. Given right. 2017 had some weird crap that happened, but it was a, a lot of that game was determined on the lack of defense that we had yep. against the, God, Jake Fromm from Georgia. <laughs> Are you yep. kidding me? Like, it's just it's so crazy to me that it, it, I feel like it gets met much quicker when you have a really good offense, but you're going up against a very elite defense. You get exposed a lot faster than if you were to at least balance it out a little bit. I mean, it's a completely gracious. different pressure put on your team, too. The defenses can thrive when they're like, guys, we need you to get out there. Get this stop. Get us the ball back. Oklahoma State 2020. Do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. In reverse, the pressure is put on your offense. It's like, guys, you got to go score. I mean, we're in trouble here. Like, Kyler so you start pressing. You start doing whatever. So you yeah. can put a lot more onus on your defense to go do what they do. Well, get it, us the it, gets ball to, back. it gets to the essence of the the game, and this is true of all sports. Your um, damn team. Offense has to be right more often than defense defense only has to be successful and this is something i've said as far as defensive theory um i wrote like three years ago a blog about it thinking that what you need to do is be a disruptor and you don't have to be right every down you just need to be right one down one down one turnover and you've stopped them one series of downs and you've turned the ball over and they're punting to you an offense has to go down and score when you've got Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, and all that supporting cast, yeah, my God, they could. it's as if they could score at will. And that's so rare. That is so incredibly rare. Yeah. Especially when you go up against great defenses, or decent defenses even. I mean, Georgia's offense was not very good last year. Right. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> Their defense was just well, suffocating. Not, not very good in, in, the, in the realm of elite football. Right. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were... They were a top twenty offense. They weren't as good as they Alabama. They were not a top ten offense, and definitely not a top five offense. Um, but they were obviously a top two defense, and that's what was a big difference maker. And in, in a very tough league, I've got more respect. That's something that I've definitely changed my mind on and come around. Is that the SEC is a better league, I, oh. especially yeah. in the last few years? Yep. Even though they've been down, you just see the talent level, you see the strength, you see the conditioning. Um, it. it it really was something that that's what everyone was saying when we'd go in, you know, go into the playoff and get beat. Well, it's like watching those Final Four teams over <clears> this last weekend <throat> in yeah. basketball yeah. and looking at them and saying, OU doesn't have a single person on their team that looks like that or can do yeah, those we type did. of things. Brady Manic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is a sad story. I, how indicative of his career. Not to get derailed here, but when he falls, when he falls, falls down, down on the final, final, play, final play that is designed uh, for him, RIP. that is so, and he threw the ball away the the play the before, play before. And, yeah. and just like and he got big but he hit the guy, he hit the big shot to give him the lead. <clears throat> he did. He, he did, also but no, missed, but I mean, he also missed four free throws. Down he the is stretch. you. Is there a more perennial lack of clutch player in the in the history of great players recently that you've seen than that poor kid? Um, and, and he had a great year. His face doesn't help. It, <laughs> that's funny. April said, "I'm so sick of looking at his face." <laughs> We're watching the game. She goes, "Will they stop it's showing not, his it's face?" It's not fun to look at. It's just he wears his emotion there on that face, and and that I think that's a, an interesting case study in what it takes to be a champion and the difference in in that type of a player versus others that just just excel just and do get it. it done with confidence. Yeah. Um, 
they wear it on their face usually and they wear and they definitely play it and they they come through and anybody can trip anybody can have a bad stumble but man that poor kid i mean right when the you needed it he <laughs> he falls down that's a really tough deal <laughs> blew a tire in the well, he had a concussion <laughs> earlier in the game they let him back in <laughs> Don't, so, get hit, don't get in the face. <laughs> they were playing over their head. I mean, they're an eight seed, rightfully so. Yeah. But they did. How amazing. I mean, and, to beat and, Duke twice. That, yeah. That's pretty amazing. And there was tons of talk going into the game that they had spent all their energy to right. beat Duke and, in, in the Coach K. So nothing there wasn't a bunch of. of expectation. Nothing to be ashamed of. And they had a 16-point lead. No, nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, I, I, I tell the kid he's a champion, yeah. and he is. Uh, it just It's so sad to see somebody – fall short of what he knows he wants to accomplish. I hope he has a great career, and I think he probably will make a lot of money. Um, it's just it's just kind of interesting to see what it takes to separate elite from greats. Yeah. And right now he's just in that great realm. Back and to, OU's been just in the great realm in football, and I'd like to see us get to the elite realm. How do you all feel about the suits? They took the team pictures, <laughs> and they're all wearing suits. And That's stuff. one thing that I'm not as like – I mean I, – I, I guess it's cool. When they're going to get off the bus, they're going to all be suits. Yeah. There's not going to be any. I think it's being just again instilling that culture, like instilling a, stand, I don't have a standard it. across the board. I don't think there's a problem. I think it can be a positive thing. Um, you're normalizing everything. You're just, it's just business. It's business time. It's business time. I like. I like. I've it. seen lots of like we were watching um, college game day, and right. you know, they're leading in the eleven o'clock game, and they show you know Penn State getting, getting off the bus off the and they're all suit. wearing suits and I'm like damn that's sh- that's sharp it does look sharp i i, I think that and they can still have their own individuality absolutely. within the suits absolutely. essentially but there's not going to be you know so you're positive Jordans so you're positive and, on it you're pretty positive on it i'm positive on it yeah i'm too I, I, either can work yeah i can see either one working i i would say that this is something i've changed my mind on over the years and i don't think this is a good and older thing but and i've kind of gone back and forth actually but I used to be, and I, my my um, knee jerk response is to be a very individualist, and I like the idea of being a complete individualist and even like a clown. Like I'd want to get off the bus in one of those giant Afro clown wigs and just be a complete goofball I mean, and come out and just dominate the hell out of things. I love seeing Baker walk out with right. a Texas Tech Trader shirt on. Right. That was awesome. Right. But Kyler very had his few own people awesome can style. pull that yeah. off, and much less a team. Yeah. Right. Because sadly, you can't have when you got nine, that. I mean, you're talking ninety I mean, how many guys Cam coming Newton off the bus. They're not going to all be able to bus. do it. <laughs> so the one guy that can do it is the Baker. Right. The other guys are going to get the wrong message. And if you're all in a suit, I think that actually does set a tone. Yep. I think and it that's does. probably good. At, uh, it, you're, not, you're not spending. You're not spending mental capacity trying to worry about what mm-hmm. you're going to wear in the one time you get in the game. You lose it because exactly. Because you didn't spend enough time. There's preparing. a reason like, there's, soldiers march. Back yeah. to that. There's a reason that you do all that, and I, I think it, I think it will help. If nothing else, it's easier. Yeah. It's easier to keep everybody focused and businesslike, and then you let them get loose and party. Yeah. In the when how, it's proper. How much stock do you put into the type of uh, analysts that we've hired? I, mean, I like got, having some. <laughs> but, I mean, you've got players like – like we just brought on Rufus Alexander to help coach the linebackers in, in some form. Oh, really? Yeah. Are analysts allowed to co- uh, participate analysts in practice? Analysts aren't, but there's different roles. You can name them something different. So is he know. full-time with them? Yeah. He leave his insurance gig? Apparently so. He worked for Bank First and Bank First Insurance. I'll have to look him up and see but if But, I mean, you've got there. Phil Lodholt helping coach the offensive the line. line. Right, yep. right. You've got... Um, Caleb Kelly's out there. And I think that is I got the Texas positive. Tech head coach. Uh, just just the fact that you can get those guys I like is pretty that. positive. Yeah, people laugh, I like that oh, a lot. What, what has he done? I don't, I don't know. He was a head coach at a major university, and now he's helping your team prepare. It's got yeah. credibility. How, how could that be a negative for right. anybody? He's got knowledge. I don't think it's too many cooks in and the it's, kitchen and it's no because knock. he's not going to let that happen. It's no knock on some of our GAs that we had that would help and watch film. It's not the same. It's just right. not. no. By far, it's not the same. Just think of it in any professional realm. If you've got a guy who's been there at that Where's level, your value add? and he's like, "Wow, um, it's instant respect and instant credibility." And we forget about it because we've gotten older. But when you're an 18 year old kid or a 19 year old kid, and you see this guy, and you see, and you get to, and they start talking about where he's been and what he's done, you're like, "Oh, oh, okay." This guy's been in the NFL. Sit up a little bit straighter. Okay, it, it, yeah. It, yeah, you sit up straighter. Absolutely. But that's why DeMarco's had such a good room yeah. over the past couple of years, despite a couple of <laughs> not great Have decisions. Have we had a good room at the running back position? 
Kennedy Brooks. Kennedy was Brooks very good. Ramondre yeah. was good. Ramondre was awesome. Ramondre. I would say it's in, in decision maybe great. Great him on a curve, great, right? <laughs> Let's. This will be. This will be the year to evaluate Gallen. Demarco. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. This will be the year player. to evaluate Demarco. I, I would to agree. see what what he can produce and what. what Speaking can of be running done. backs, early hype on Javante Barnes. Oh yeah, Barnes. Yeah. Is stock up. Who knows? It's one of the easier positions you can come in and play right away. But I mean, you're coming well, up we behind were pretty Marcus worried about Major that and I don't. And all of a sudden, I don't it's think looking he's, good. It doesn't sound like he's second fiddle to, to Major at all. So how much more positive has that position got for us than it was just like I don't know, eight weeks ago, sixteen weeks ago, when when we were like Brooks is leaving. I don't know where are we gonna do. And Sawchuck is he's skinny because he he likes to run track, but. And he's not an early enrollee, but that's another five star running back that's we're with always, speed to burn. Yeah. Who's gonna be fourth on the Jep chart? I mean We're always but we're always four deep in the spring. I'll be it, it'll be a miracle if we make it to a four deep running back room. That'll be by interesting the time to the see the philosophy. I have no idea. Did anybody know about the philosophy that Levy runs or anybody else? Um, I hope, I hope he, run, he sticks with two guys because he runs he runs balanced, but I don't know how he, I don't know what he runs with. Like well, I don't mind like rotations. My don't criticism yeah. in our in our recent past is that we didn't get enough guys in there enough and and often enough. Um, I'm not saying we need a rotation like Grinch is coaching the position, but I would like to see guys get a chance. I would Gary like Grinch to see him play the slot go a lot. I'm a hot hand kind of guy. Yeah, me too. <sighs> well, I'm a hot hand to the extent if you got a super talent, yeah, keep him in there and let him run. But I like the idea like of... Like, it took us it took us six games to keep Kennedy Brooks on the field. I agree. That I didn't mean, make any sense. So, like, we had the we had the wrong rotation of too few guys. Marcus Major never got in there. Yeah. And it's like, none of this makes sense. One or the... Choose one or the other, guys. Fresh legs or hot hand, but not neither. There was so much that just didn't add up about last year. It's... It's hard to... It's hard to be real excited about... Gray, because he looks strong, all accounts though. coming he, into last year and his previous production in the SEC, just it just didn't show up at all. Yeah, I mean he went down with arm tackles, hand tackles, yeah. and we never gave him the ball in space. We but never, we'll see. I don't know. It would, the whole, all of it was just. To me, so I'm kind of blank slate on all the players, though. Same. I mean, I'm letting them come in clean, and yeah. I hope that the coaching staff does, and I think they will, and see what they actually can produce. And, and I don't think anyone besides Dylan has their job. Yeah. And even he could lose it if he doesn't true. play well. That's but, true. I mean, I think the staff is smart enough to know that you give everybody a complete shot leading up to – Two weeks into August or something, mm-hmm. and then you start. All right, Locking these are our guys. Locking right down. up till now, you've. This and is sti- your spot, and it's, and it's still up for grabs. You can still lose yeah. your position. You can still, you guys, you can still earn the. And position. you lose it throughout the season because it also seems like we had guys that weren't going to lose their job, right? No matter how they played. Weirdest situations ever. You think? <laughs> you think back to the LSU guy who who <laughs> reversed himself and put went back to LSU remember the Trey, uh, uh, what was his name I'd love to know his yeah. story I'd love to know what he said did he get in there and go what the, what hell's, the hell's going, going on, on around here I think the rumor on that is he saw the workouts the weight room workouts and and so I think and he, he was bolted. soft and he said we yep. look like a Zumba team <laughs> yep I really do <laughs> Because we're like CrossFit, we're not dad actually, or whoever yeah. was just like, no, nah, this is his dad. I don't know. Billy Blanks there's was been multiple the, like the, the team. There's rumors it was a girl. <laughs> his dad was very vocal, like on message boards, saying that he was pissed off about yeah. it. Who knows how much Who of that knows is real? What like, was what? But it'd be interesting. To I want to see what Levy does with the rotation running back, mainly because with the up tempo they run, I think he's probably going to stick with a running back for a series, and then say you go score a touchdown. Then the next series, you put the other running back out there because they do different things. Um, I mean, to me, yeah, very Gray different. is a completely different very size different, player very different than, looks, yeah. than Barnes or Major. So I think series for series, we may just see not much rotation. You know, coming back to the uh, you know refs have to hold the ball. I need to Google search it to see how that works. Apparently, <laughs> according to some idiot on Twitter, we and, should tag that guy in our uh, our post. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I I don't I haven't watched I didn't watch Mississippi that much last year so I'm interested to see what it looks like with this up tempo. It's 
It's gonna be yeah. fun. And what we do as far as subbing players in and out because we mm-hmm. hated what happened last year. Yeah, we I think thought it, it was the it's dumbest be shit s- ever. Yeah. Receiver and running back. Yeah, with the substitution. It'll be a great All balance with Schmitty, though. Just, It'll yeah. be a great balance. Substitutions of the entire team was baffling. Yeah. Last year. baffling. But it just it was so weird that he went away from. I mean, he Lincoln built the offense in fifteen. 16, 17, it was rolling, 17, 18. We because brought, we brought in Hurts. We brought in Hurts. It was rolling. In eight, it, even though Hurts wasn't great, it was still rolling in 19. And then It was sputtering. I mean, it was, it was showing. And then 20, 21, the stats all. It was showing some weaknesses in, yeah. in, in, in and 19. And it seems like he just completely went away from everything that ever worked yep. in 21. It was almost as if he didn't completely have all the magic <laughs> answers. And part of the magic was two tremendous once-in-a-lifetime talents, and when it starts to fall apart, plus a lot of other talent who's playing in the NFL today, you like, crap, I thought I had all the answers. It turns out I don't. I just had really, really good players yeah. who could clean up the, the I mean, shortcomings. two running backs that played in this year's Super Bowl. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's probably a combination of that. And, he, you know, he may have learned a lot out of all this. Like you were saying, Connor, a second ago, he may. I've thought of that too. Be getting, I, getting it'll to be the interesting U- to see USC Riley be like, okay, has learned a lot of lessons. Yeah, I don't know. He may be he humble, be. but I mean, maybe again, we went eleven and two this season. Right, ten, ten and two on his watch, In obviously. This yeah, but yeah, I don't and know. you know what? Too, I, I, we might have talked about this. I'm not sure. I still find it incredibly interesting how few players went with him. I really do. I think that's a good point. I yeah. really do. As many that did, he and as an much as we're genius, fearful of, and how many? How many guys? I mean, quarterback went d- to not have Farouk go and not have uh, um, Farouk yeah. is Farouk is like the big exclamation. And mark. he's like best friends. Yeah, uh, you, you, you're. That's a great point. Same high Hazelwood school. didn't follow him. Hazelwood went no. to Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. Guys that both stayed and guys that, that, did, that went elsewhere and didn't follow him. And Stodner, there's a lot Stodner of talk. Didn't follow of, him. And you know that anybody that wanted to go could play. Oh yeah, Weiss. And Mims yep. were both gone. Yeah. If the staff stays. Yeah. Yep. An 11 win season, Lincoln Riley stays, they're gone. <laughs> that's telling. I mean, that's, that that's tells telling. you all you yeah, have to know. Yeah, they both said there. that. That's what's crazy. Yeah. They said like, that. Mim, yeah, Mims mm-hmm. was looking at TCU. I knew Mims was like, seriously <laughs> Weiss, considering. Weiss leaving. was going to go to Ole Miss yeah. to be in Levy's system. Levy, yeah. <laughs> and then we hired yeah. Levy. He's like, oh, okay, I'll stay here. So it, 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 it is, yeah, it's it's baffling. And Hazelwood would not have left if he had waited. Was Riley trying to create I, a, I, I don't think Hazelwood would a left. basketball one-and-done world in, in football? I mean, <laughs> it's as if he just, like, thinking, if I just get a bunch of five-star recruits, like, he the, didn't know how The John how it Calipari of college football? Yeah. Mario, William, Mario Williams could be, that could be a big blow. He, he might be I an think elite wide receiver. Oh, decent. I think he'll be very good. I think he's pretty good. Uh Put a decent chance, let's put a 25% chance he is the next guy in the NFL with super talent who does something super damn stupid and is either <laughs> arrested or in some weird, crazy whatever. Like, you know, yeah. between pulling your pants down in a shopping mall or something <laughs> stupid. Like, just like, or poison in the locker room. Like, that guy, he... He ran without his helmet on for a touchdown. <laughs> Something ain't right about this guy in terms of his decision making. I liked it. Ugh. It was stupid. It nah. it cost us. He shouldn't have done it. He should know. He should know the rules. Know the rules. Well, where was the fifteen yard penalty on that when they ripped his helmet off? I don't recall that. Did well, they, agreed. Get, agreed. Did they call that? Uh, no. I don't no, think they, they did. Didn't. They did not call that. <laughs> they didn't throw a flag on that play. Yeah. <laughs> but still, that was goofy as can be. I, I don't know. Uh, he's just, and he may have. A, I don't mean to disparage the kid. He may be just Sounds tremendous, like but he worries me a little bit that he's going to be the kind of guy that is one of these guys that like, God, you're so good, and I really want you to, on our team. When but you are, man, when you are, just when trouble. you are that quick to be a sheep, latched on to someone like Caleb Williams yeah. who hasn't done anything in his life, which right. given your friends, whatever. At some point, you, at some point, you got to grow up and be an adult. The craziest yeah. one was you got to Jalil like Farouk. You got to Farouk yeah. it. And McCutcheon you gotta was say a crazy one Farouk because it. he was his him and his dad were bitching on Twitter about this staff. Yeah, about, and then they go follow him. Yeah, and then they follow him to USC. Yeah, and not to mention <laughs> Latrell McCutcheon looked like ass during the season. Yeah, right. Given yeah, I mean, it's probably due to maybe a, it goes hand in a hand, number of things that we mentioned because right. he's playing out of position or whatever. <laughs> but you're gonna go and play for the exact same person. It's who like battered doing that woman yeah. syndrome or something. Okay, like, I'm yeah. sticking yeah. with him. Like what? Wait, what? What, yeah. what are you doing? No. Dad hits me because he loves me. I <laughs> yeah. promise. Yeah. 
That was a crazy one. That was a that was a crazy one. Good riddance, so I mean, like, got but yeah, you know, right, a fitness no system. And that maybe maybe he's smart. And he realizes, yeah, I'm not probably gonna make it in a Brent Venables world. So well, I don't that know. too, that too. Yeah. No, that Brent Venables kind of maybe said that. we're gonna we have some guys know, that aren't gonna make gonna it. He's gonna be great. He's gonna be an all star at USC. He's gonna be the next Ronnie Lott. And I will outwardly say, I hope that doesn't happen. Who knows? So, do you think we bring in any more transfers before fall? Yeah, I, I yeah. do. Because there's still guys leave. Like in the last week, I've seen four or five guys say. You know, put their thing. Out I think it. I don't think it'll be a lot. I don't think it'll be a lot because I really think Brent Venables is going to be. I. I do think he'll be picky, like yeah. especially late How in the so. off How season. How many spots do we have to fill? Uh, are you we thinking? might have two scholarships open, maybe. Okay. But we're going to have kids that leave after spring ball. Yeah, you think so? they're going to. Yeah, they're going to see where they're at on the depth chart. Right. Yeah. And just want to go to scholarship. They, they, they may just yeah. have coach talk where Venables is like, "Hey, yep. I think you're a great kid. Yeah, but we're moving this direction. I don't really see a place for you here. So yeah. if there's somewhere we can help you get to, right. Like, let us. Do I can see that happen to three or four point. kids in yeah. June. So how many do you think we'll have? Put a number on it. Oh, I, th- well, I, I think probably we'll bring in two May. or three more. I think May one we'll have. All right, three. A couple guys in the pool. I say we bring in two to three more before over fall. under a three. By the by the mm. by the when when is the Transfers at any time, so by by the reporting for spring ball for for fall ball in August, how, how many? How many more freshmen do we have coming in that aren't early enrollees? I don't know, but they're already counted towards yeah, they're the numbers. Counted. I would put it at three. I would say we bring in three. I would over-under. say we put it yeah. in three. I, I would say at a good yeah. over under. I'd say we're at two to three. Two and two and a half. Because I do think we'll be. I think he'll be picky. So about two and a half. You take the over. I would take the Potter over. Take the over. Half. You take the. Mm. I guess I'd take the over because we'll I'll probably, take the over as well. Because if we have two spots really right now, when we lose three to four more kids, yeah, I think you have to bring in probably three. Over but I mean, I think something telling about the staff is also, you get someone like Justin Harrington who quit in the middle of the season to come back and play for you. Like, I mean, damn. I mean, what's going on? So I mean, that uh, maybe that maybe that kind of goes against the grain of. There'll be some guys who leave, right? I don't know. I can see like a, a Bryce in Washington. Who was a highly coveted, a big recruiting win for Grinch at safety, four star kid out of Texas. Can't get on the field two years, no matter how bad yeah. Pat Fields played and yeah. injuries. Bryce, to Bryce in Washington's from, who's the kid from? Oh, I'm thinking of uh, Braden Walker. The kid from McGinnis. Oh, yeah, he's kind of like a defensive end. He's, twe- he's a tweener. tweener. Yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting. There's one of our highest recruited kids we've gotten in a long time was that. Um, that edge player that was, um, gosh, he was he was Clayton a Morris, our kid, Clayton Smith. Clayton Smith. He's Better a tweener. Morris, yeah, Clayton he's Smith. He's an elite yeah. talent, but he's mm-hmm. two twenty. Yeah, he couldn't get on the field. Grinch didn't know where to play him. So interesting to see if he can get to like two forty. I feel like, and Lincoln maybe Isaiah this Simmons. is just my homerism or my confidence, whatever optimism. I feel like this staff will have a very certain understanding of where a kid needs to be and they'll tell a kid like that all right here's where we need you we need you at 240 or whatever the number is we need you playing like this this is your position and if it's not there we're going to help you get somewhere where you can play we want you to do the best you can do so if it's a transfer or whatever but it's very but this clear is how you fit here's where we want you to fit here's yeah. what you need to do and that will be in contrast to what we've heard from many sources about what happened with players in the last few years where they're like, yeah, here's what you need to do. All right, I did that. Okay, you're never seeing the field, and and you're never getting a meeting with me to understand why Why? you're never seeing the field. I feel like they're going to be very honest with kids and and, and actually have a good opinion about where they need to be. I think they understand their system. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. So we're going to have we'll have another podcast probably before spring ball, surely. In that one I want to I talk about do the we should do a, a post game to the spring game. Well, for sure. I'm saying we, we're going to do one in between there where oh, we're yeah, going to yeah. talk about rule changes that we'd yeah. like to see. Topical stuff. Um, and that will bring up your your you want you to do some Google searches, Lucas, and understand <laughs> the rules. You and need to figure out why cover you're all of why that. I don't know football. Well, why you don't are, know why football, are you, dumb? you dummy. <laughs> and then, and then we're going to do some post game on the spring. Maybe have um, some friends from a, from another podcast on and have Jacob join us and get his understanding of what he saw coming out of spring ball. I think that would be a lot of fun with two plane sports and those Absolutely. those guys there. And um, we got a lot more to talk about. A lot more to be optimistic about. A lot more. To be excited about. It's going to be here before we know it. All right. All right. Pack the palace. That's right. Boomer sooner. Boomer sooner. Boomer sooner. Boomer sooner.